Hi, in the previous video, we learned how to evaluate lengths. Now, in this video, we're gonna look a little bit closer at what is a limit and we're gonna demonstrate how does a formal definition uh, of a limit uh, sees it. Okay, but before we can do it, we need to introduce a notion of neighborhood. And look, let me just explain this to you with an example. Let's just say that we've got some limit M. Then, we can see that if I'm gonna take and subtract from L some A1, here, we're going to have L minus A1. And then, if I'm going to add to uh, uh, add to a limit some number A2, over here we'll have L plus A2. So look, over here, this distance represents A2. Well, this distance over here represents A1. Okay, and look, what we have now established uh, is that there is some, uh, some distance between L and this L, L minus A1, measured by A1, and over here by A, uh, L plus A2, so distance is A2. Okay, now look, this A1 and A2 can be either big, but we would prefer them to be small. Look, they, of course, A1 doesn't need to be equal to A2, but they can. It's not a problem. But look, what do we see? Over here, we've got L. L and, uh, L is just a point, one point. Remember, point doesn't have a size. It's so, so, tight. So look, now, knowing what we know, we can formally describe those distances. And we're going to call them intervals. But probably you already uh, knew this notion. And OK, and look. So, uh, but let's start slow. So, what is a close interval? now everything that we've learned during logics and the set theory to define what a closed interval is. Look, closed interval we will denote as this, L minus A1 and L plus A2. So here we have brackets, right? And this uh, this interval we can now define formally. So we use three bars and we open another bracket and look, they're, they're all Q's, all Q's such as Q, uh, Q is bigger or equal to L minus A1 and at the same time uh, and at the same time Q is smaller or equal to L minus A2. So look, we've actually, what we've done, we've written a formal definition of the clause uh, 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 closed interval. Uh, closed interval. Now, if we can define closed interval, we can of course define also open interval. So, how will we denote open? 
open interval. Oh, oh, maybe one more of blackboard of clarification. We use Q, right? Because L, right, the limit is on the Q axis. Okay, so now we've got open interval that we will denote like this with parentheses. So now, how can we define uh, open interval? Well, quite easily using the same logics. Now, there are all Q's such as uh, Q is bigger than L minus A1 and at the same time Q is smaller than L minus A2. So look, actually, what is the difference between closed and open interval? Well, open interval do not contain two border points, the one over here and the one over here. And look, within the same reasoning, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can define half open interval and half closed interval. So, half open interval, we can denote as L minus A1, L plus A2. Uh, look, so how should we define it? Look, when we include points, we use brackets. When we don't, we use, uh, uh, we use parentheses. So, what should we do in here? Well, those will be all the cues such uh, uh, such that L minus A1 is, low, uh, is lower than Q and Q is lower or equal to L minus A2. Okay, and I hope you know where I'm going with this. Finally, we will have half closed interval so we will have uh, uh, the first part is closed the other one is open so we've got all cues such as L minus A1 uh, is uh, low, uh, lower or equal to Q and at the same time Q is lower than L minus A2. Okay, so now we've exhausted all the possibilities. Uh, let me show you uh, some uh, 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 some examples. Okay, so how can I write this? Well, there, here we have all Q's. Uh, uh, here we have all Q's such as. Uh, oh, let, let me close this one. Well, it's to be nice. Now that uh, the Q is higher than three, and at the same time. Uh, at the same time, Q is lower or equal to 5. Okay, let's try another one. What if we have 6 to infinity? Okay, how could we write this? So we, here we have Q, all Qs, such as Q is higher than 6, uh, uh, Q is higher than 6, do we need anything else? No, look, because oh, from here, from 6, we are going to Q, so this is it, we don't need anything else. Okay, so look, when we will be talking about limits, 
we will use intervals to define them. But look, what we are interested in the most is to be a special case of interval that we are going to call neighborhood. Okay. Second, please. Okay, so neighborhood of L is uh, uh, is an open interval. is an open interval L A minus A1 L plus A2 uh, which is is we're going to use word covering L so this definition uh, is Quite close. So look, when we will use now definition of, of a limit, neighborhood for us is defined very loosely. There is some open interval. It doesn't need to be symmetrical. So a1 and a2 can be two very different numbers. But um, uh, it, it is open, so it does not contain those two numbers. And what we are sure is that L is somewhere in between those two values. What we can clearly see actually just from this notation. Okay, so finally, now we can move to the definition of a limit. I'm going to read it to you and I'm going to be commenting on it. Okay, <coughs> so formally, what is a limit? As V approaches number N, the limit of Q equals some function of V is the number L. Okay, I hope you uh, uh, this is uh, the, 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 at this point, uh, right up to the moment you understand everything. So, as V approaches number N, so this is what we were doing, the limit is simply uh, the value L where uh, that Q uh, 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 the, the Q is going to. Okay, so now uh, uh, if for every neighborhood of L that can be chosen, however small, so look, we are choosing some neighborhood around L, so and we prefer to think of them as very small because that is the key to the limit. But this is this interval around uh, around L it doesn't need to be symmetrical, as we said. There can be found a corresponding neighborhood of N. Well, so how would we call? Uh, uh, how would we uh, call? This neighbor, how would we define this neighborhood of uh, n? Well, that would be some n minus b1 because those numbers don't need to be the same. Well, by no means, and n plus b2. Okay, uh, excluding point n. Look, this is important. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this point up. Why? Look, I hope you remember the case when we were uh, showing graphical interpretations of limits. Then we had a function that looked like this. happening over here. Look, when we evaluated the limit, it turns out 
that even though this point is not in the domain of the function, right? Still, this point is the limit of this function evaluated at n. This is why, look, uh, in most of the cases we're going to be doing that this is not necessary, but this is a formal definition, so we need to take into consideration every possibility. Okay, now, in the domain of the function, such that for every value of v in the, uh, uh, in the n neighborhood, its image lies in the chosen n neighborhood. neighborhood. Okay, this last part kind of complicated, but not if we're gonna put uh, if we're gonna put this on the graph. Okay, so let me do it like this. So on this axis, we're gonna have Q. On this axis, we're gonna have B. Okay, and let's just say that we've got some function. Uh, doesn't matter how it looks. Okay. Do you remember this one? Total cost function, short run total cost function. Well, I hope you do. And uh, look, we what we want is for limit with v approaching n of q be equal to f. Okay, how can we uh, how can how can we can uh, uh, describe this on the graph? Okay, so here we have that function q is so f of v. Now here we have n and the value of the function at this point, although as we said, even if the situation was like that, so we would have an open point over here and nothing would change, right? Then, over here we will have some left. Now, what, what are, what is, the question is, what is this neighborhood and what is this image of N neighborhood in the chosen L neighborhood? Okay, let me demonstrate this by simply drawing the neighborhood, right? So our neighborhood, of course, again, we can exclude N from this neighborhood, but, but we, like, okay, we don't need this. So here we will have some point, and here we will have some point N minus B1, right? So this distance over here is B1. And here we will have some point n plus b2. So this distance over here is b2, right? Okay, now what? Now look, what is going to happen if I'm going to calculate the value of the function? Uh, of, uh, of this function at these two specific points well, over here we will find the value of the function here is L minus some P1 right? this value well, it doesn't need to be smaller but if we would have downward sloping function those things would be uh, uh, upside down, but everything else would still hold. But this is easier to understand, so I'm going to draw it like this. And here, we will have some L plus A2. And look, A2 and B2 are of course different numbers. It can happen that they are the same. But it's not a necessity. 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 Okay. Like I want to make it more. Uh, 
more parallel and more flat. Okay, and look, what have we done over here? What is this image that we've been talking about? Look, this point in the middle, we could say, oh, it definitely, it has coordinates and L, right? Now, what is happening around this point? Look, here we are, we can, we are creating this neighborhood. And look, neighborhood of N is this interval. Why? Neighborhood of, uh, uh, of L is this interval. And what is this image uh, uh, that we are talking about? Look, image is basically all, uh, for this set of variables, of, of, uh, of arguments V, given this function, the image of V in Q is L minus 1 to A plus 2. Because look, those are all the mappings that go from here to here. And we can read them from the function. And look, I could, for example, make here a rectangular. Okay. And look, we see, we see uh, that this rectangular actually is showing this image that we saw and that we were discussing in the uh, uh, in the definition. Because look, this side of this rectangular uh, is showing out our neighborhood of n. And then this image through this function is translated to this side of the rectangular over here. So we see that actually, uh, in case of this function, it works. But look, another thing that is said in this uh, in this uh, definition is that in neighborhood, however small. So look, what if I would choose here another uh, n plus b2 and another n minus b1. Look, through this, I will be able to find some new l minus a1 and new l plus a2. And look, I can make another rectangular. And again, we see that this is what is happening. That this smaller neighborhood is also translated through the function to this new neighborhood of L. And look, doesn't matter how small will I go with the neighborhood, we will always have exactly the same situation. Okay, so we clearly see that in this case it works. But you might say, yeah, but this experiment uh, is not showing us much because we can do it for basically every function we know and it's still going to work. Well, this is, tr this is true to some extent. Why? Because the functions we are used to dealing with have this have this tendency that the values of these functions are actually their limits at given points. But remember, we used to, we dealt also with the step function, and in case of the step function, it's no longer true. We wouldn't find uh, an image of a neighborhood in uh, an in an L neighborhood. Okay, so now that we know how the definition works, let's do an exercise on it. Okay, we're going to deal with the problem we already solved. So we already know that the limit exists. But we're going to actually try to look for the correspondence, uh, for the covering of the two neighborhoods. 
you know, the image that we get through the function. Okay, so the function uh, that we're going to cover is q equals 1 minus b square over 1 minus b. And we already know that uh, in this case we can rewrite this function as 1 minus b times 1 plus b over 1 minus b, which because these two components are canceling each other out is equal to 1 plus b. But we should remember one important thing. Look, even though we get this function out of this way, v cannot, still cannot be equal to 1. So we need to write that v cannot be equal to 1 in case of this function because we clearly cannot divide by 1 minus v. So this is the case that we had that n doesn't actually need to be in the domain of the function, but still we can calculate the limit at n. Okay, so we also calculated the limit with v approaching 1 out of q, and we got that this is 2, right? So now let's see what we know. We know that n is equal to 1 and that l is equal to 2. Let's try to build the neighborhood. So how do we do? First, neighborhood on v, right? So neighborhood of n. So neighborhood of n will look as n uh, minus v1 and we will have v because here uh, we simply want to have any value of v in this neighborhood and n minus n plus v2. And look, by the same token, we can build a, a, we can build a limit, a, a, we can build a neighborhood for a limit, right? So we will have that l minus a1, but now limit is associated with the value of the function, so we put q over here, and we have l plus a2. Okay, but we know that the point at which we want to evaluate is 1, so I can substitute 1 over here and over here. We know that the limit is equal to 2, so I can substitute over here and over here. Do we know anything else? Yeah, look, we know that q is equal to 1 plus v. Okay, so what can we do next? How about I'm going to take this inequality and I'm going to subtract 1 from it. Okay, as a result, I'm going to get that the, uh, it turns into 1 minus a1 b 1 plus a 2 okay now those two start to look very similar to one another right yeah they do look now if I'm gonna set a a1 to be equal to b1 and uh, a2 to be equal to b2, we will have the case that those two neighborhoods are covering each other. We actually find the rule of correspondence that is present in this case, and because of that, we can be sure that L is actually the limit of the function. Of course, look, we got such a simple result because here uh, we've got a simple function. Q equals 1 plus V is not in our function. If we would have a different function, like we would have 3 over here, then we would have 3V over here. So in order to get V, what we would have to do? Divide both sides by 3. Uh, but look, it doesn't really matter that much, we can always 
as long as the limit exists, we can always find this rule of correspondence. But now I have the very good news to you, and it's that look, we've learned already a lot about limits. We know what, are, what is limit. We know how it looks graphically. We know how uh, how it looks from a formal point of view, but. The good thing is, when we actually calculate limits when we need them, we use shortcuts. And those shortcuts are hidden in the theorems that we're gonna uh, deal with in our next video. Okay, take it.